perfect golf clubs don't exist. I wish they did, I really do, but they just don't. It's impossible to make a perfect golf club. And on today's episode, I'm gonna show you why that is. So people often ask me, Gabe, is this the best club? Or they say, is this club better than that one? Or is that one better than this one? And if you read my replies, it often sounds something like this. Well, if you're looking for more distance, you may wanna consider club A. If you're looking for more feel and workability, Club B is going to be something that you should shortlist. The reason that I can't give a definitive answer to questions like that is because you probably guessed it, perfect does not exist. But why is that? Let me show you. So when it comes to golf clubs and golf club manufacturing, there are two sets of opposing forces. So our first set of forces that really are opposed to each other are going to be forgiveness, and what I'll call playability, and this has to do with a number of different factors. I want you to think of these kind of like a lever or a scale. On one side of this scale, you've got forgiveness. On the other side of this scale, you've got playability. You can either have a whole lot of forgiveness and a little bit of playability, or, that scale can tip the other way, and you've got just a little bit of forgiveness, but you've got a whole lot of playability. There is not the perfect club that has both. They're all somewhere sort of in the middle. Now, what is forgiveness and what is playability using this definition? Let me explain. Now, the number one thing here when it comes to playability in my mind is going to be actual workability. I'm gonna draw a green here just to give you an idea. Down here on the bottom, we're gonna have our golf club. Now when you've got a very forgiving club, you can hit that ball on the toe. You're still going to hit that ball probably a little left and you might come up a little bit short, but it won't be too bad. You could hit that ball a little closer to the heel and again, you get a little distance penalty. You might come up short, but not so bad. You hit one a little thin and it probably goes straight. And again, it might come up a little bit short. You hit one fat and a very similar thing happens. You come up a little bit short, but a forgiving club is going to give you a very tight dispersion there. Now, let's illustrate that same thing, but with a club that's a little bit more playable. If I take a more out to in swing, I can hit a nice fade. If I take a more in to out swing, I can hit a nice draw. When I hit it in the center, it goes where I want it. But if I hit that same shot towards the toe, I'm going to get that curvature, but I might come up considerably short here. I might hit that ball towards the hosel. I hit that hosel rocket and it's going over here. I hit that ball a little bit thin on the club face and it's coming up well short. And now my dispersion here is much more significant. Now with a club that offers premium playability, Let's say we've got a green here and we've got the pin over here tucked in the left side. You've got a big old bunker there, short and left, which you don't want to miss. And maybe you've even got another bunker along, which you don't want to be in. On top of it, this hole may be a little bit of a dog leg. You might have some trees over here that we've got to avoid. A shot like this is going to call for shot shape. Shot shape means if I take a more inside to out swing path, that ball, assuming I hit center contact, is going to wrap nicely around those trees, curve in and land near that hole. 
That's what a playable club can do. The other option might be to take more of an outside to in swing and maybe we go this way and try to work it around the trees, around that front bunker. That's obviously a more difficult shot, but a playable club is going to give you the opportunity to do something like that. A forgiving club may give you a little bit of workability, but it's probably going to be kind of lacking. And let's say we end up here. We take that same fade swing and maybe we even hit the trees because we can't quite wrap it around. Or if we do just scoot by, it's just not gonna curve back the way we want it. That's the difference between a club that's workable, has more playability, and a club that's more forgiving. A more forgiving club is going to give you much straighter shots and again, a little bit less dispersion. That playable club is going to let you control the trajectory, control the spin that you put on these clubs and allow you to shape the golf ball. That's what better golfers would like to do most often, but also better golfers hit it out of the middle of the club. All right, guys, that's one set of opposing forces, and there is a second set of opposing forces, but here's the point in the video where I ask you to do two quick things for me. First of all, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and if you have, just share this video with someone who needs to know about it. Number two, check out my friends over at curated.com who support this channel and who really want to help you find the perfect clubs for you. They may not be the perfect clubs for everybody, but you could find the perfect clubs for you by working with their experts. There's a link down below. So that's one set of opposing forces. The second set of opposing forces, and that is going to be distance versus stopping power. There's really four ways to get distance. First of all, you can make better contact. Hitting the ball and striking it in the center of the club face is going to give you higher ball speeds than when you strike it on the toe or the heel or miss it thin or chunk it. But of course, that is solely on you and being able to practice and getting more consistent with your swing. The second way to gain more distance is simply by swinging faster. Maybe you lift some more weights, maybe you work on your flexibility and you're able to generate more club head speed and therefore the ball goes further. But of course, that is also on you. The third way to get more distance in your golf game is one that our folks in the Mile High City of Denver will attest to, and that is to get at higher altitude and at lower humidity. When you can put those two things together, the ball naturally flies further through the air. But of course, that is on you and your environment. Now, the only option for golf club engineers to get you more distance is to literally decrease the loft, to move that club a little bit forward, to press that loft, and then therefore generate a different trajectory, higher ball speeds, but that comes with a whole new set of issues. Now for this example, this is how we're gonna be looking at the golf club in a profile mode as I explain this. With a club that's going to give you a little bit more distance, it might look like this. It might be pretty pressed forward, and we're gonna call that the strongest clubs I see at a seven iron are about 28 and a half degrees at the seven iron. That's about as strong as it comes. That's the Cobra Forge text that you might have seen me review on this channel, something like that. The stealths are right up there as well. A club that has a little bit more stopping power and consistency might look more like this. It's not gonna be as pressed forward. There's going to be more angle there. For something that has a little bit more stopping power and consistency, we're gonna call it 34 degrees. That's something like those old Ping I twos that I recently tested. Now, a club like that, again, not going to be as pressed forward. It's going to be more lofted, but it's going to also change the trajectory of the shot. So I'm, what I'm gonna do here is build our green, and this is, of course, not to scale here, guys. <laughs> Here's our flag stick out here. I'm gonna put it right there in the middle of this green just to illustrate something. When you hit that seven iron at 34 degrees, you might hit a trajectory that looks something like this. It's nice and high, it's penetrating, and it's gonna come down at this angle that's pretty steep. It's gonna stop here on the green and it's gonna move forward just a little bit and it's gonna end right here near the hole if it's a good shot, of course. With our distance club, we're gonna get 
likely a lower trajectory, we're going to get a shallower angle of descent. We might hit in that same spot, but what happens is we're going to get a whole lot more rollout and now the ball ends up back here. That's the trade-off with distance and stopping power. You might be able to hit this seven iron, let's say 170 yards. And you might be able to hit the more traditional seven iron only 145 yards. But as you can see, the trajectory is going to change. At 145 yards, you're hitting a seven iron with a club like this. At 145 yards, you're probably hitting an eight or a nine iron with a club like this. So that all plays into things because you may be able to find a similar trajectory with that nine iron now but you still will lose stopping power. So there's always going to be some sort of trade-off here, guys, and you've got to decide for your game, what is it that you can live with? And that's why the balance of these scales is always up to you. You can have a lot more distance and a lot less stopping power and a lot less consistency. Let's get into consistency. Basically, the more lofted a club is, the likelier chance that you're going to stick it tight. When you've got a stronger lofted club, you are more likely to miss left and right as well. And so all that leads into consistency. So it's completely up to you. Do you want more distance? Do you want more stopping power? Or do you want it the other way? Do you want more control, more stopping power, trajectory control, and can you live with a little less distance. The choice is yours. That's why the perfect golf club does not exist, cannot exist, and will never exist because of these forces. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you understand a little bit deeper why the perfect club does not exist. Now, what I want you to do next is check this video out because in this video, I share all of the golf club buying mistakes that I've ever made. And hopefully you can avoid those, don't make my mistakes. Hope you enjoyed this one and I'll catch you back here very soon on another edition of Let's Play Through.